Hi everyone. Today I'm going to share with you my recipe for lumpia with homemade gluten-free lumpia wrappers. That's right, we can make our own gluten-free lumpia wrappers so we can have lumpia once again. Who would have thought it? We'll start by making the batter for the gluten-free lumpia wrappers. And this just consists of three simple ingredients. My bread flour blend, egg whites, and water. That's it. Now you'll find the recipe for my bread flour blend on my blog and the recipe for any of my um, videos that you watch on YouTube will always be in the description box. So you just need to go to the description box, you'll find the link to the recipe, click it and then you'll find how to make the bread flour blend or any of my flour blends for that matter. So back to this, we're gonna weigh everything out in a bowl and then we'll start stirring it together to make this um, almost like a pancake batter consistency. Um, and we'll just whisk that together until it's smooth. Very, very simple to do. This is one of like the easiest things you can do is to make this batter. And then once you've made the batter, um, then it's just a matter of painting the batter onto a skillet or um, a flat top like griddle like what I have. This is a built in griddle that is on my uh, cooktop. But you can use um, any griddle you have, you can even use just a skillet is fine. And once you get it over medium heat to where it's pretty warm, you can see the steam coming off of this, use a pastry brush. And that's right, we're going to paint this onto the griddle and I like to paint it into as best I can get it into like a large square and I'll show you why after we're done with all of these after we're done making them I'll show you why I want the square I've tried it with the um, a circle and I find the square works better and there's a reason for that I'll get to that in a minute so just paint it in spots like you want to kind of go one way like I'm doing and then go the other way with the batter and that's just kind of as a reinforcement so it's not completely um, terrible it's very once you get it like this it is a pretty sturdy uh, wrapper I find it even much sturdier than what you would find um, in the store for the non gluten free ones from what I can remember anyway so once you get, get this on here, give it like 30 seconds or so. And then if you wanna take a spatula and start peeling up the outer corner there, um, the outer corners get a little more crisp and I'll show you how you can trim those up in a little bit. But if you peel up the outer corner, then you can start um, lifting it with your fingers up off the griddle and it'll just peel right off. Just watch burning your fingers and just like that, it peels right off. It's really kind of cool and fun to make these. My mom and dad told me about a time in, in Spain when we lived in Spain, he was in the Navy and one of the wives, she was Filipino and they were having a party for their division and they had to make over 600 lumpia that weekend. And there were no store-bought lumpia wrappers back then. So they had to make their own. And this is how they did it. It's just a really cool idea. And I'm so glad that we're able to do it because there are no gluten-free lumpia wrappers for sale in the stores. And this is the way to still enjoy lumpia. So now I'm gonna make the filling and I'm using ground pork here. And this is tamari because of course, soy sauce is not gluten free. So since there's plenty of salt in this tamari, I couldn't find the um, sodium free or light sodium. Um, I'm not adding salt, but I am adding freshly ground black pepper. And I like to add um, green onions to this along with um, equal parts of grated fresh ginger and garlic. And then this is Napa cabbage that's been shredded along with some shredded carrots. And again, you can make the filling your own 
way. Um, there's always shrimp you can use. You can use um, beef, I think. There's just, and chicken, of course, there's a lot of different uh, methods, even just a vegetable filling. And I added two eggs to this. And now I'm just using my hands to really get it uh, well combined, like if you were making meatballs or a meatloaf or something. Now, once you've got the filling made, it's time to um, trim up these lumpia wrappers. And I have them in a stack. I, I put them in this stack when I took them off the griddle. And the edges kind of get a little crispy because they are the thinnest part of the lumpia. So we want to um, trim those off. And I'm just using a nice big chef's knife to do that. And the reason I like to do a square is because I prefer this method that I found. It's so much easier than making like a burrito style or egg roll style. You don't have to fold in the ends and I'll show you what I'm talking about. But first we need to peel these apart. Now in retrospect, I probably would have cut them in half first and then peeled them apart. But regardless, you can still peel them apart just fine. They're pretty resilient. They don't tend to tear too easily, which is great. Um, but even if they tear, you're going to be um, rolling them onto themselves a few times. So that tear will end up in the middle and it won't matter. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. So just peel them apart just like you would if you were using store-bought non-gluten-free uh, lumpia wrappers and see how thin and like see-through they are. That's exactly what we want. And again, had I even thought of this when I was first making them, I would have cut them in half first but make sure you cover them while you're um, wrapping each one individually. So this is what I'm talking about. I cut each one in half and I'm gonna make two lumpia now out of this one wrapper. And if I had just cut the entire stack the first time, <laughs> it would have worked out probably better. But I'm taking a good um, tablespoon or so portion and putting it on the corner of each. And I'm gonna kind of shape it into a nice um, cylinder, log, whatever. And then I'll start tightly rolling it up. Now this is um, not the traditional way of folding the edges in and then rolling it up but it works just the same and the filling does not ooze out at all when it's frying it just kind of seals up now i'm dipping my finger in some water to seal the bottom and i tried it with egg white and i found the water actually works better than the egg white so i'll do one more so you can see how easy it is to do of course, you don't have to do it this way. You can leave the squares whole and then do it the old fashioned way of um, wrapping them kind of like a burrito where you fold in the sides. But this to me is just so much easier. Just fold it over, get a nice tight, tight roll there and then just roll it up. Seal it with water. I kind of press down to really give it a good seal. And that's it. Then you just fry them. I don't like to overcrowd the pan too much, but I've got the heat over about medium to medium high. And I'm just letting them cook on one side for about two to three minutes. And then I'll flip them over and uh, cook on the other side for another two to three minutes. 
And that's it, you guys. These are so good. They're so crispy. They're so reminiscent of what I remember a good lumpia to be. My husband even said, and he's not gluten-free. He doesn't need to eat gluten-free. And he said, these are a winner. You definitely want to share these with everybody. That's how much he loves them. Now, these are the fried ones, but um, these ones I made in my air fryer. And I set it at 400 degrees, preheated to 400 degrees for about nine to 10 minutes. They're nice and crispy too. Um, either way you do them, you're gonna love them. So get in the kitchen and make them. I hope you enjoy.